Joining me right now is the author of The Coming Collapse of China, Gordon Chang, is joining us right here on set. And Gordon, it is good to see you. Thanks, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us. So Mike Pompeo is just back from this worldwide trip, talking to our European friends, trying to explain to Europe that if you use Huawei Telecom, you will probably see less information from the U.S. in terms of national security. This risk is real. So much to talk about. Got one executive making fun of the United States. Where do you stand on this issue? Well, first of all, look, we spy on China. China spies on us. That's Edward Snowden. What's different, though, and this is what Huawei is important, is Huawei can spy on U.S. companies to get commercial information that Beijing will use against us in the commercial arena. That's very different. That's off limits. That's what the Chinese said in 2015 when Xi Jinping stood next to President Obama in the Rose Garden. The Chinese said they wouldn't do that, but they continued to do it and they ramped it up. So this is very, very different. And Huawei is absolutely at the core of China's plans to dominate technology. Yeah, and, it's, and people... it's that reason exactly why I believe you cannot separate what's going on with Huawei with the issues in trade in terms of the Trump administration looking at IP theft. What you just said is IP theft. And, 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 That's what it is. And yeah. Gordon, we spoke about this years ago. Huawei's been at the forefront of our concern ever since we turned them down, relocating their military base. Yeah. Okay, th th we've been through this. Okay, during the Obama administration, Trump has put. They even wanted a to move the Huawei headquarters next to a military near base. military base, and yeah, it was turned right. down. That's right. Yeah, and, and so Huawei's been at the forefront. Okay, literally of what was considered the most, the least trusted of all the Chinese companies, which is why CFIUS has always been tough on it, them. And to put this into context, um, China donated the headquarters to the African Union. From 2012 to 2017, every night Beijing was filching information from the AU and they were using Huawei equipment in terms of that download. The other thing. Yeah, they built the African uh, telecom infrastructure yeah, throughout yeah. Africa. They've built their. In telecom infrastructure. And so Secretary Pompeo is absolutely right. Yeah. You know, if you have Huawei equipment in your backbone, especially for 5G, the Internet of Things, which will connect everything, you can't connect as well to the U.S. because we cannot endanger our networks because you've decided to use Chinese equipment in your networks. Yeah, yeah. So and the, the debate that we were having yesterday, Dagan, about that op-ed in the journal yes. about uh, Huawei, you know, the journal writes this editorial yesterday saying, look, Mr. President, you can't put these things together and you can't blow off what Huawei did. If they broke the law, they broke the law. Right. The president never said he's, he's going to do away with those charges. That's why I was pushing back on that, because the president never said that. I mean, of course that's right. Right. You want the uh, laws uh, to be enforced and then work on trade agreements uh, otherwise. This, the, this was an issue that was raised. Someone asked the president a question about are, are, is this on the table, the indictments involving the theft at T-Mobile and the financial chief who, has, who had been arrested. They asked him the question. He said, well, I'm going to talk to the attorney general it. and the attorney general, but it's not under discussion right now. I'm paraphrasing not right. having the it's quote exactly in front right. of me. But it was more of like a warning shot from That's the editorial exactly right. page of like, don't do this in case it crosses your mind. And I can't again. imagine he would do that. I, I, I can't imagine he would do that. What did you want to say, James? We're gonna, we're well, gonna... I just, I'm wondering, uh, you know, we've, the Department of Justice has obviously charged Huawei uh, stealing intellectual property. We're talking to allies around the world. A lot of them, since Huawei gear is cheap, want to keep buying it. Uh, is it a question of sharing more data with them or is, is it still unclear what Huawei is up to? Well, we know what Huawei is up to. I mean, there are a number of different examples. Just one that has escaped the public attention, but it shows you how Huawei is working at the direction of the Communist Party. We learned three weeks ago that Huawei smartphones in Hong Kong were not downloading contact from, content from Twitter and Mozilla Firefox. Now, if you're just a smartphone company trying to sell devices in Hong Kong, you're not going to do that. But you will do that in order to enforce Communist Party censorship. And so Huawei really does act directly with, under the direction of the Communist Party of against its own economic interests. It's a communist country. Real yeah. quick on the um, high-stakes summit, we got to get your take on President Trump and Kim Jong-un. And I just want to deal or no deal on a trade deal. Oh, well, there will be a deal, okay. but well, it won't last. That's what I'm talking about. The president, the, you mean a deal on China with trade. China, I just wanted to hear but, that. But, what, but what will it include? I mean, that, that's a, a bigger conversation. Is it just going to be the Chinese buying more stuff from the U.S.? No, I think it'll probably be, you know, the language on, on compliance and enforcement, on intellectual property theft and on subsidies, but that's going to be basically unenforceable. Remember, we have had U.S. compliance um, 
uh, people in China at ZTE. And ZTE still violated its second uh, uh, settlement agreement with the U.S. by selling Dell equipment to Venezuela. So even if you put American inspectors in China, it just doesn't work. And, and by the way, that's probably why the editorial board makes that uh, assumption, because of the way we treated ZTE. Well, the right. think, so, uh, obeying our criminal laws ought to be right. baseline there are expectation, there regardless are, of what the trade are, deal is. There are things yeah. called criminal, criminal espionage, which the, that, that would be the path to go down if you really want to put a hard line in the sand. Oh, yeah, well, definitely. There's so much but we haven't gone down that hard anything, line. Anything that's going to come out of this meeting, uh, President Trump meeting with Kim Jong-un, they're going to meet Thursday. This is just eight months after that first historic first meeting in Singapore. Uh, what do you think? I have no idea, Maria. I know that administration officials are trying to downplay expectations, but if you do put two willful figures in the same room, President Trump, Kim Jong-un, anything can happen. So uh, there is concern that President Trump is going to agree to some things that are probably not in our long-term interest. I actually think Trump won't do that, but that really is something you hear among many commentators. I, I think that you can link what's going on with North Korea to China. Can a, a mutual like of one another, whether it's Xi or Kim Jong-un, can it actually translate into something tangible that benefits the United States that's enforceable? Well, uh, not enforceable. I mean, we can do a number of things to kick the can down the road, and sometimes that helps us. In this particular case, I think that we really need to work much closer with our friends and allies rather than with the Chinese, who have not, in fact, been helping us on North Korea. I mean, there was an interesting piece that whatever the president decides to pursue with North Korea, that still, from an economic perspective, for because of the sanctions, for U.S. companies to do that, it needs to go through Congress to get reapproved. Sure. And a lot of people think there's no way they're going to reapprove that because of human rights violations. The history of peace deals with communist dictators is not a good one. No, it's a very poor one. Even trade deals with a country called China. Yes. Gordon, it's good to have you this morning. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks so much. Gordon Chang joining us.